Hi guys, Jeffrey here. And if you are watching this video, then there's a good odds that you're dealing with a partner who are stonewalling or gaslighting you right now. And if you're watching this too, you might have seen a lot of my client stories of people like Eve, like Scott, or like Michael who dealt with stonewalling and gaslighting and they managed to create a thriving relationship despite that. And in this video, I'm going to show you the exact process and the exact methodology that they use to get themselves out of that situation. So this video will go way beyond just mindsets, which we discussed in the previous video, but it'll show you the tactical things you can do to actually respond to your stonewalling or gaslighting partner here. So again, stick around to the very end of this video. You don't want to miss a thing here because this has been very massive for a lot of my clients to date. And in case you're new to the channel, guys, if we haven't met yet, my name is Jeffrey, and I help empower men with the right internal shifts and skills to be able to become an irreplaceable asset in the relationship, to create a healthy culture in the relationship, to eventually reattract your partner back. So to begin this video, I want to take you back to a few points that was made in the previous video and understanding the main causes of gaslighting and stonewalling in the first place. So in that video, we said that stonewalling and gaslighting is not really caused by a character issue from your partner per se, that this is more caused by self-preservation. And we said in that video that gaslighting is just an active manifestation of self-preservation and that stonewalling is just a passive manifestation of that self-preservation. And in that video too, we also said how it's not just your partner who's stonewalling and gaslighting that you actually do a lot of gaslighting and stonewalling yourself, but often in a very unconscious or subconscious way that you often don't even know that you're doing it. In that video too, we also talk about the character versus environment debates and how most people stonewall and gaslight, not because, again, their character is flawed, but usually because the culture of the environment of the relationship has degraded so much, in this case, Safety has degraded so much to the point where the need to self-preserve is very high. And because the need to self-preserve is very high, the tendency to stonewall and gaslight is also very high as well. And I know a lot of you guys watching this video is still going to be in a mindset where if your partner is stonewall and gaslighting, you're still going to still blame that on your partner's character. And what I'm saying here could be very difficult for you to believe. So again, I'm not going to belabor this point too much, guys. If you want to understand uh, the deeper details of why this is and why stonewalling and gaslighting is not usually caused by character issues but more of an environmental issue then i encourage you to check out the previous video i have on this topic exactly and if you disagree with anything i said earlier then that's actually more reason for you to watch the previous video so i would encourage you to jump over to that video if uh, needed so again just to summarize that video really quickly guys is that usually this whole this whole cycle starts with you quitting that the creation of a bad environment in that relationship and this bad environment in the relationship leads to a lot of insecurities and a lot of defense mechanisms and this bad environment in this case the lack of safety creates a lot of insecurities and creates a lot of defense mechanisms that often shows up as self-preservation and this self-preservation often shows up in a very bad way in a toxic way and when you have a culture in a relationship where people are self-preserving a lot then what happens is that you have a lot of resistance either in an active form in a form of gaslighting or in a passive form in a form of stonewalling so if you understand those set of principles then we can go to the next stage here, which is understanding what is resistance. And the simple way to understand resistance, guys, is just someone else misunderstanding the intentions behind your actions. So in your case, most likely, this misunderstandings is actually bred from your partner's negative confirmation biases about you and your intentions here. And what's important to note, though, is that you also possess and hold a lot of confirmation biases that are often wrong about other people too. And you can see this very clearly in moments like, for example, let's say your partner does actually something nice for you. But then let's say you have so much baggage in the relationship to where you don't trust their intentions anymore. You don't trust that they have the best intentions for you anymore. Your partner could be doing really nice things for you, but you would just misinterpret that action as having a bad intention. And there's usually four types of misinterpretations that you can make. There's four categories of misinterpretations that people can make. Either the misinterpretation is bred from the lack of safety, the lack of trust, the lack of ability, or the lack of space. And we'll get deeper into defining what each of these four items are later on. But it's important that we define things in this very specific way like this, because in order for you to have the right answers to how to resolve the situation you're in, which is dealing with stonewalling and gaslighting, you still you have to first come up with the right questions, with the right diagnosis. Because as I say, the right answers are always bred from the right kind of questions. In this case, the right treatment plan, the right treatment plan to actually dealing with your partner's stone only and gaslighting must be bred from the right kinds of diagnosis. And we need to understand how to diagnose resistance, in this case, active resistance or passive resistance in the form of gaslighting or stonewalling in a proper way. So for example, if you go to a doctor's office, a doctor, a really good doctor, cannot just say, oh, 
you came to the office because you're sick. But a good doctor needs to go much deeper than that, much more specific than that. They need to define the diagnosis in a very specific way, like, for example, defining the where, the what, and the how behind your sicknesses in order to find the right treatment plan. So same here. A lot of people cannot deal with stonewalling and gaslighting because they're not able to form a very specific and a very deep diagnosis of why the stonewalling and gaslighting is happening in the first place. In this case, people's problem is that they have a very vague diagnosis, which leads to very vague treatments, which often leads to very ineffective treatments as well. And when you can understand and diagnose the core reasons behind reasons like this, not only will it help you find a better treatment plan, but when you face resistance like stonewalling and gaslighting, you will panic less, you will get angry less. Because if you don't understand something, that will make you panic. But if you understand something, you will panic less. And number three, it also allows you to thrive through the situations. As we'll talk about later, there's actually a lot of ways you can interpret resistance as actually a positive thing, as actually opportunities to actually create more safety, to change the culture, etc. But we'll talk about this in just a bit. And when you're not in a panic like this, and where you're clear-headed, you understand, the right diagnosis, then it will be easier for you to later find more creative ways to lean into that resistance as well. Now, before we talk about the right ways to respond, let's talk about the common mistakes that people make when responding to stonewalling or gaslighting. And most people's mistake is that they try to fight it. They actually try to usually get angry at it. They usually use this opportunity to actually blame and shit and try to label their partner in negative ways. And when you do this, you're actually playing into the problem here. You're perpetuating a very negative script. Simple example of this is, let's say your partner comes home, you want to have a conversation about something. And when you bring up the conversation, your partner just stonewalls you, gives you a cold shoulder. And when your partner stonewalls you and gives you the cold shoulder, you get upset and you maybe play the cold shoulder back. Maybe you, you start to blame your partner. Maybe you start to label your partner, etc. You start to punish and scold your partner for stonewalling or, or giving you the cold shoulder. Or maybe your partner comes home again, starts gaslighting you and starts to pin the blame on you. And in a defensive mechanism, you also start to justify yourself or pin the blame back by saying, for example, well, it's not all my fault. It's also your fault. It's also this is what you did, too. And if this is your response, guys, you can see how this is actually perpetuating a very negative cycle, because when you stonewall, when you gaslight back, when you respond to your partner's toxic behaviors with your own toxic behaviors, then you can see how this destroys more of that safety again. You can see how this also destroys more of that trust for obvious reasons. You can see how this destroys ability as well, because now, you know, your partner comes home with a problem and she's trying to talk about that problem with you and you stonewall and gaslight back, you're creating a, a problem on top of another problem here. You're layering problems at that point. And that's why sometimes in your relationship, you get to a point where someone asks you, for example, hey, what's going on in your relationship? What's wrong with your relationship? And you just say, I don't know. I don't know where to start because Things have gotten so complex because you've created so many layers of problems that you don't even know where to start now. It also worsens the lack of space syndrome where now when you create this culture, you will want to spend less time with your partner. You will want more space from your partner. Your partner wants more space from you, which if you have the lack of space syndrome here, then the odds that you are going to self-preserve and display all these toxic behaviors will also be higher, not only for your partner's side, but also for your side as well. And if you look at your relationship, and the patterns of your relationship, you'll see that as safety degrades like this, as trust degrades, as ability degrades, space degrades, you'll also find that not only is your partner stonewalling and gaslighting more, but you are also doing the same thing even more as well. And again, guys, like we talked about in so many of our videos again, when you're dealing with stonewalling, when you're dealing with gaslighting, every fiber of your being is going to want to retaliate, is going to want to shift the blame and pin the blame on your partner. Basically, we react in the ways that you've been taught by a lot of YouTube videos and really common advice out there on dealing with stonewalling and gaslighting. But my advice to you is don't do this. Again, I want you to take away two quotes with you here. The first is that if you want to be successful in dealing with this situation, you have to be willing to do what the 99% of people would not do so that you can live the life that the 99% cannot live. So again, guys, while it's hard, I understand, understand that uh, what's easy to do is not always the right thing to do. And the second thing, guys, is that you cannot solve your problems using the same approach that you use to create it. So again, if you look at your existing approach to dealing with stonewalling and gaslighting, and you look at the average people's approach to dealing with it, where has that approach gotten you? Most likely, if you're watching this video again, it hasn't gotten you very far. So in the next section here, I'm going to show you how I teach my clients on how to deal with stonewalling and gaslighting and the exact process that they use to get out of that situation, I want you to be open to that idea. And it's going to sound very different, very unique, and very contrary to what you will hear in a lot of other popular videos here and there. 
But if you follow it, guys, it will work. So now that we define what not to do, let's define what to do instead. I wanna define for you the six exact steps, the six steps that you need to uh, take yourself through for you to be able to respond to stonewalling and gaslighting in a proper way every single time. And the first step here, guys, is I want you to, whenever you're dealing with stonewall and gaslighting, I want you to pivot away from the original topic of conversation. Like completely pivot away. And be careful here, guys, because sometimes the stonewalling or gaslighting can come in very subtle forms that you cannot catch. But I want you to be hyper aware of whenever you're getting stonewalling and gaslighting, identify it, and be able to have enough of a, of a filter within yourself to be able to switch away and pivot away from the conversation. So let's say your partner comes home and you want to talk about something with your partner. And instantly she gives you the cold shoulder, a voice to conversation. Right then and there, what a lot of people would do is to double down on the conversation saying, hey, I want to talk about this. We need to talk about this. And you force that conversation into your partner, basically. But what I want you to do is that when you notice her stonewalling or when you notice her starting to get defensive and gaslighting you, I want you to drop that topic completely. And I want you to then go to the next step, which is I want you to logically pinpoint the root of that resistance. So I want you to ask yourself right then and there, is this a lack of trust problem? Is this a lack of safety problem, a lack of ability problem, or a lack of space problem? And in the program, guys, we teach you a lot of uh, mental heuristics and mental questions that you can ask yourself to really identify which of the four it actually is. But for now, I think when you deal with your own stonewalling, when you deal with gaslighting, it should be very easy to pinpoint whether it's a lack of safety, lack of trust, lack of ability, or lack of space problem. So for example, if I'm looking at my partner and she's stonewalling me, the first question I would ask is, okay, why is she stonewalling me? Why does she feel like she feels unsafe to talk right now? Why does she feel like she cannot express and wants to avoid this conversation? Is it because I've created this culture where it's not actually safe for her to do so? Maybe whenever we talk about deep feelings, deep thoughts, that sometimes you use it to bite her in the ass later, you use it against her later. Maybe you react in a very bad way to destroy the safety and trust. Is it that the problem is so complex maybe that sometimes you don't even know where to begin, where to start, let alone your partner? Or is it a lack of space problem where there's so much embitterment that's built up between the two of you where difficult conversations now become a very daunting thing to do, to have, etc. Now, once we identify which of the four root causes here, we need to go even deeper and pinpoint the exact misunderstanding of your intentions here. So I want you to imagine in big, bold letters here, what is your partner saying right now in her own mind, in quotes? So for example, if it's a lack of safety problem or lack of trust problem, the quotes could be, you know what? I don't want to talk about this because it's going to buy me in the ass later. I don't want to talk about this because whenever I tell my partner the truth, he can't take it. Whenever I tell my partner the truth, he will lose his emotions. What is the big, bold quotes of resistance that your partner has? I want you to have that front and center. And I want you to understand a few things here. When you're trying to find the exact misinterpretations, it's not just often created by one circumstance. So it's not just that, oh, I destroyed safety this one time by getting angry this one time, but it's usually caused by a context of things. So it's a pattern of behavior that you've done. So if your partner feels unsafe or have the lack of trust, for example, it's not that you did just one thing, but it's usually a pattern of things that you did. So I want you to identify not circumstances, but I want you to identify the context that leads her to feel this way. And this in our program is what we call finding the thing in the thing. And it's a crucial part of understanding the deeper layers behind your partner's resistance at that very moment. And when you're in this position too, guys, it helps to not only look at your partner from a third person perspective, but also from a first person perspective as well. So often when we're trying to understand why our partner's resisting like that, we tend to always say, we tend to come to a place of, okay, let me look at my partner right now and let me see what she would be thinking. But I want you to switch that question completely into asking yourself, what would get me right now? What would get me to the point where I would stonewall and I would gaslight to this extent, to this level? What are the full set of contexts that needs to come together? My childhood context, the context, the history of our relationship, my fears of the future to get me to want to stonewall and gaslight at this very moment. And that's the key, guys, to actually going very deep into your partner's psyche, to understanding your partner so that you can logically find the thing being a thing here. And once you logically find it, you can put it in big, bold letters in front of you, then I want you to emotionally feel it. So I want you to imagine yourself in your partner's shoes right now, experiencing what she has experienced, going deep into that feeling, and picturing yourself and imagining yourself uh, very vividly in the scenario, in the set of contexts that would lead you to gaslight or stonewall as well. And I want you to feel it first. And once you can feel that, guys, I want you to be able to deeply paraphrase that 
to your partner. So here's a couple of examples, for example. If my partner were to stonewall me right now, I would go through those steps and I might say something like, you know what? I see that you don't want to talk right now and I kind of understand why you don't want to talk right now because, you know, in the past, I think whenever you share your deepest thoughts, your deepest feelings, your true thoughts about how you really feel about the relationship, about us, about the situation, and if your answer wasn't what I actually liked, I would actually sometimes get angry. Maybe I wouldn't take it very well. Maybe I use it to bite you in the ass later or to hold it against you later. Maybe you feel judged every time you share that. And, you know, if I was in that position and I would feel judged like that and I would feel like I'm being punished every single time I tell the truth of what I really feel, I would also want to avoid the conversation. I understand it. Another example would be if let's say your partner is gaslighting you. You could say something similar. They're gaslighting you. Let's say they're telling white lies or shifting the blame. You might pause, go through those steps, and you might say to her, hey, you know, I've been doing, doing a lot of thinking about how I show up in the relationship and how I show up to conversations with you. And I can see how the way I present myself can make you feel a bit defensive, a bit guarded, and feel like you have to kind of justify yourself because, yeah, whenever we have a conversation, I tend to pin the blame on you a lot. I tend to like judge you a lot. So I understand why you feel that way. And when you can do this properly, guys, when you can really put yourself in your partner's headspace, really sh- come to the resistance with a place of compassion, understanding like this, and be able to paraphrase it deeply from a very genuine place, this will always work. Because think about how f- this flips the script completely, right? Your partner is coming to you with a script of negativity, with a script of stonewalling and gaslighting. And usually what happens is you get that script and you play along with the same script and you respond with the same gaslighting, with the same stonewalling again. And this worsens the problem. But when you can respond by looking at the resistance, shifting the conversation completely, and coming from a place of compassion and understanding, and you can say those things, think about how this flips the script completely. Because here you're taking a case that people often regard as negative, and you're basically turning into an opportunity where you create safety, where you create the understanding. And this pattern interrupt, guys, is going to be very, very massive for your partner. But the crucial part to understand, guys, is that it's not about the what you do here. It's not about just getting the structure of pivoting ways in a conversation, of paraphrasing properly, correct? But it's also the how you do it. So a lot of people, for example, they come to me and say, hey, Jeff, I try to be compassionate to my partner, but the more I try to be compassionate, she still still wasn't gaslights me anyway. She doesn't like it anyway. Well, you might have gone the what right there, but the how is also very crucial. That's like saying, you know, hey, Jeff, uh, I want to lose weight and I want to uh, gain muscle and I went to the gym and it didn't work. Well, it's not that the gym doesn't work. It's not that the process of going to the gym doesn't work. It's maybe that you're going to the gym in the wrong ways. Maybe you're dieting the wrong ways. Same thing here. The what has been proven to work many times. It's how you do it that matters. You gotta do it the right ways. And remember also the paradox of change. So if you wanna watch a video on that, you can click the link up above my head also down below this video. But when you do this pattern interrupt on your partner, often what happens, it can be very shocking for your partner, especially if you have a long history of reacting to her stonewalling or gaslighting in a negative way. So once you do this pattern interrupt and you flip the script like this, your partner's reaction may not be good at first because again, she might be misunderstanding your positive behavior as some manipulative way to trick her into doing something, into you playing the high horse, for example. She can be very suspicious of that. So don't expect that the first time you do this, she's going to react well right away. You might need to do this consistently over a long period of time for her to start to lower her suspicions over time. So again, don't expect it to be a quick fix thing. It doesn't happen overnight. And again, remember that this is like planting seeds, guys. So the first time, again, you do this, it's not like you do this once and instantly your partner's mind changes about you and suddenly everything is good. Again, there's some very intense negative confirmation biases that she has about you, about your history. And so even if you're doing the right things, she might still misunderstand the intentions behind your actions there. So again, the remedy to this is that you need to know the right how. And you need to be able to execute the right what with the right how over a long period of time to eventually bust through that paradox of change. So again, if you don't know this term, patterns of change, I would encourage you to click the link above my head also down below this video for more content on that topic. And the sixth step, guys, once you paraphrase, is something optional, but it's something that can be powerful when done right. And it's to give some sort of statement of action or recommendation of next step or suggestions of next steps. So for example, if I realize that the reason why my partner is resisting is because of the lack of ability, I might say, for example, do you mind if I suggest something that can make this easier? So I know sometimes... When the problem has gone so complex, it can be really hard to express or to even know where to start. But I wouldn't just encourage you to just start anywhere, to start somewhere. And I'll try my best to be able to be understanding and realize that whatever you say at first may not be coherent, may not, be, may not make sense. Um, but I'm going to wait and be patient to wait for 
everything building up and for me to piece the problem together here. So that could be something that you recommend to your partner. Um, but again, I want you to tailor this to what exact source of resistance you're facing here. So if it's a lack of space, you would tailor it accordingly. If it's a lack of trust, you would tailor it accordingly, lack of space and lack of ability accordingly as well. Now, the important thing to note here is that when you're giving the statement of action, this is not an imposition. This is not you telling your partner like, this is what we're doing, but it's more of a suggestion. It's more of an invitation to take your suggestion. So you notice the way I worded it was not as an imposition, but more of, hey, I have an idea here. Do you, do you want to take it? And here's my idea. What do you think about it? So here, you're giving your partner a lot of chances to actually negate what you're saying, to disagree what you're saying, if she doesn't like your idea. Because if you make it imposing like this, then you're actually going to destroy more safety, you're going to destroy more trust, you're going to destroy more ability, and you're going to perpetuate the same problems that you're in in the first place. So those are the six key steps that all my clients who have gone through stonewalling or gaslighting went through to be able to rescue their relationship from that situation, guys. But that's the tactical parts of what you can do. Realize that for you to be able to execute these six steps, there's a lot and many layers of internal shifts that needs to be done here. So for example, you need the bulletproof vest. You need to not have the fundamental attribution error mindset, FAA bias mindset. You need to not have the victim mindset. You need to be untethered for you to be able to even do the first step, which is to pivot away from the initial script that you were given to even have enough of a awareness and a filter to be able to pivot away from the conversation into leaning into the resistance and for you to not be swept away by the script that your partner is giving you. And it takes a lot of antithetic thinking, a lot of emotional literacy as well for you to logically and emotionally find the thing been a thing, to emotionally find the core reasons behind the resistance and for you to also deeply understand that resistance as well, which is steps two and three. And it also takes the right uh, learning and practice processes, the right learning and practice culture and environment for you to be able to master the six things and be able to do it really, really quickly without even thinking. Like it becomes your lowest default, your natural thing that you do. So if you notice the six steps that we told you, many of you may be looking at that and going, wow, this, is, this takes a lot of work. And, and that's what happens with a lot of my clients too. At first, they're very slow in doing this. Just like when you first ride a bike, you're very wobbly, you're very slow in riding a bike, but eventually as you get better and better, you can do it faster and faster and faster to the point where now you may be able to do it in a split second within a conversation. And that's the main goal is that I want you to be able to do the six steps here and perform it within split seconds as if it becomes your natural default. And so here in this video, I showed you kind of the six key steps. Now note that there's a big difference between logically understanding and conceptually understanding how to actually uh, respond to resistance, not only just the internal process, but also the external processes to do it. But there's a vast distance between conceptually understanding that and being able to experientially understand that and be able to perform that in a very smooth, effortless manner in your relationship. So you wanna join a program that gives you everything you need, not only the right skills, the right process, but the right learning principles as well, the right culture as well for you to be able to master skills like this in your relationship to change the course of your relationship forever. Then I want you to join me in my masterclass on the five proven steps to rebuilding your relationship from the ground up. In the masterclass, I'll show you the exact steps that all my clients have used to get them from a dire situation to where they are today. So if you wanna join me in the masterclass, you can click the link above my head, also down below this video for more on that. So I hope the video was helpful for you guys. And for now, I'll see you in the next video.